All right, geezer, it's Jules here from the future get- sorry, the- Getting very old school today, and I'm here to talk today to you, my lovely friend, about video games. I know, surprise, right, considering the channel that you're on? And seeing as we're all in great moods because the temperature in the UK has risen above 9 degrees to a whopping 10 degrees, that means it's summertime, baby! Even our green screen went on holiday recently. It'll look more like a theatre production, it'll be fine. I am here to save you some time, my friend. I'm gonna cut right to the chase and tell you what this video is all about. It is about video games that you can complete in under 10 hours. Now, why is this important? Well, not to waste too much of your time, but it's because of the fact the video game industry is so intent on wasting ours by giving us massive games full of bloated, busy work. And you know what? I'm done with it. I wanna tick off some games on the list, not just keep adding to them. So let's get down to brass taxes. I'm Jules, this is the Future Game Show, and these are 10 brilliant games that you can finish in under 10 hours. Number 10, Sayonara Wild Hearts. So let's kick things off with a game that quite appropriately lasts the length of your average album, Sayonara Wild Hearts. And for the record, an average album usually is about an hour to an hour and a half, not like a Napalm Death album that's like... 13 minutes. Sayonara Wild Hearts is a mesmerizing collision of endless runner, platformer, action and rhythm game genres, and presents itself as an acid-tipped, neon-splashed interactive piece of art that melts unrelentingly catchy tunes with eye-gasmic visuals for an exhilarating hour-ish playtime. Yet the game's biggest strength is surely its variety, with each stage creatively changing up the style of gameplay, pinballing you between the aforementioned genres at a dizzying pace, ensuring that it is scientific Typically impossible to get bored by this thing. It's impossible! And if you're somehow not sold on the premise by this point, then I've got one little tidbit for you. The voiceover narration for this game is provided by none other than Queen Latifah. You're welcome. Now, to be clear, Sayonara Wild Hearts isn't exactly a difficult game, being about as challenging as a deep stretch, but in the same manner, it is thoroughly satisfying. Plus, you could theoretically beat this game on your lunch break, so why not pop down to Greg's and polish this off before getting back onto the Jurgensen account? God damn you, Jurgensen! Number 9. Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons now in 2013, years before he made Game of the Year winner It Takes Two and told the Oscars to uh... Can you swear here? Can, can you swear? swear? Okay. Go do one, endearingly eccentric filmmaker Joseph Farris released his debut video game Brothers A Tale of Two Sons. Here the player takes control of two brothers, I know the clue was definitely in the title, as they go out and try and find a cure for their father's condition, that being an illness in which life itself has told him to um... Uh, go do one. I'll tell you! Yet rather than adopt the co-op format of the later games, Brothers is a uniquely single-player experience, with players using their controllers two thumbsticks to move each of the brothers. To navigate the world and complete puzzles, players must operate the siblings in tandem, which, while having the sure potential to leave your brain tied in knots, is actually incredibly intuitive. I mean, for example, I get a head rush when I just try and tie my shoes, and I was able to beat this game, so yeah, you can definitely do it. I believe in you, champ. More to the point, having full control of both brothers serves a more unexpected visceral purpose that you'll eventually start to see for yourself. And you will definitely need some tissues on hand for the ending of this one. At around three hours in length, Brothers is a lazy afternoon's worth of gaming, although technically you'll probably be thinking about the emotional impact of this game for years after. Number 8, Titanfall 2. So let's get table slappingly real, my friend. Ow! And talk about Titanfall 2. This was a game that EA had zero faith in and decided to bafflingly release it in a packed launch window, yet for those that did play this game, they will be able to tell you that it has one of the best campaigns ever. In fact, I'm gonna bust it out. It's time for the chef kiss, friends! Mwah! That's how much I love it. While the original sci-fi shooter was rightly dinged for its threadbare excuse for a story mode, Respawn Entertainment ensured that nobody would have such a complaint about the sequel. Though clocking in at just five hours, which is an undeniably scant length for a AAA story, Titanfall 2's campaign is an exercise in drum-tight efficiency, cramming a Franklin... Franklin? 
cramming a frankly bewildering amount of action, suspense, and even emotion into its breezy playtime. Like all good sequels, Titanfall 2 masters and one-ups the original's best ideas, expertly melding fluid pilot traversal with face-melting mech combat. But the piece de resistance is undeniably the legendary mission Effect and Cause, which introduces a time travel mechanic that totally flips the game's traversal system on its head. Seriously, this level even has its own Wikipedia page. That is how impactful it has been. Although, saying that, hills in the shape of breasts also have their own Wikipedia page, so maybe that's not a good metric there. Don't look it up now, don't look it up now, watch the rest of the video, do it later! But Titanfall 2's campaign isn't just a high-calorie spectacle. By emphasising the bond between protagonist Jack and the irreverent Titan BT, it even manages to wring some honest-to-god emotion out of the whole shebang. And if you're somehow still not persuaded to drop a couple of quid on it, the accompanying multiplayer mode is an all-timer, though that will definitely take up more than 10 hours of your life, that is for damn sure. Number 7. Unpacking Though this game is not nearly as exciting as two massive robots slapping the beef off of one another, there is a lot to be said about the video game Unpacking, which details, well, basically you unpacking your stuff in a house. I swear that it's actually a good game, even though it doesn't sound it on paper. If a game that simulates the state of an average teenager's bedroom might not sound terribly engaging, Unpacking's zen-like take on the Tetris-style puzzling just might be one of the most unexpectedly addictive gameplay loops in years. Each of the game's stages follows the protagonist as she moves into her next home, and takes place over more than 20 years. From her cute little childhood bedroom, to her pokey student dorm, to her house as an adult, you're tasked with sorting through the many boxes that contain her life and placing them in the appropriate spaces. Now, if that sounds tedious on paper, the unchallenging yet supremely satisfying gameplay, gorgeous art style, soothing music, and unexpectedly affecting background story make for a uniquely diverting experience that finds profundity in the apparently mundane. Plus, it is a title that for me is pure escapism, because uh, I have a crippling Warhammer addiction. So if I were to play this game, it would just be like, here's all the stuff in the spaces, and still there's 13 boxes that are just sitting just outside of camera view. <sighs> And at just three hours' length, unpacking packs up and leaves long before it can begin to outstay its welcome. Number 6. Hi-Fi Rush Now, 2023 has been such an epic year for games already that you couldn't actually be blamed for missing Hi-Fi... Hi-Fi? <laughs> Hi-Fi Rush, which was shadow-dropped by Bethesda back in January. An outrageously entertaining rhythm action game, Hi-Fi Rush hurls the player into the shoes of budding rock star Chai, who has an ever-present sense of rhythm due to a music player being cybernetically implanted in his chest. Oh, and you've also got a robot cat companion, which kind of shows you what type of game Hi-Fi Rush actually is. A great f***ing game! Despite having gameplay focused around attacking enemies to the beat, Hi-Fi Rush places a premium on the chill time first and foremost. You're rarely punished for deviating from the beat, but keeping in step will definitely deal out greater damage and more stylish combos. Throw in some rhythm mini-games and platforming sections and you have got a sizzling stew that also happens to be a visually jazzy one, while also just slapping the nuts off you sonically. Therefore, if I was to try and sum up this experience into a single motion, it would be something like this. Thank you, Wisconsin! I don't know why I turned into Gollum at the end there. What the hell is even that? Now, if you cling to the critical path, you can comfortably slide through this game in seven to eight hours. And better yet, you can play it on Xbox Game Pass for mere pennies. Number five, Spider-Man Miles Morales. Spider-Man Miles Morales is the sort of AAA game that we desperately need more of. A modestly scoped, big budget adventure that does not waste a single second of your time. In an era where AAA games just keep getting bigger, there's something refreshing, even quaint, about this spin-off to Insomniac's 2018 Spider-Man game, which says everything that it needs to in under seven hours. But don't let Miles Morales' shorter playtime fool you into thinking that it's a lesser game, because if anything, it is just oh so drum-tight, I can't express how good it is. It kind of feels like meeting up with an old friend for a few hours, the one that you've not seen in a long time. You have an absolute blast, you part ways, and you feel satisfied, with the only problem being the thought of when you you're going to see them again. We just want more. With its tighter gameplay and more streamlined adventure, Miles Morales leaves the bloat of its predecessor, namely those awful mandatory stealth sections. <coughs> Ew! 
on the cutting room floor. Now to be clear, there is around 20 hours of content here if you want to mop up every last side mission, but for those craving a technically stunning superhero romp worthy of the big screen that won't eat up your entire weekend, well look no further friend. Number 4, Citizen Sleeper. Now Citizen Sleeper might just be the best game that quite nearly everyone slept on last year. And to be honest, if you're a time precious gamer, just hearing the description of this game might put you off entirely. <clears throat> a phenomenally rich and atmospheric cyberpunk RPG. I feel like I've aged about 10 years just reading out that description there. I mean, surely that type of game has got so much content that it's going to make me feel very anxious and uncomfortable. What's that? You can complete it in under six hours? Well, much like a pig's penis, that is a twist. But what truly differentiates it from its RPG brethren is the inspired decision to meld visual novel-esque storytelling with tabletop dice rolling decision making. Dice rolls determine the player's path as they attempt to survive the game's ruthless corporate dystopia, sometimes forcing you to make tough decisions about how your resources are spent each day. But it's the deft, world-building and memorable array of characters which truly makes Citizen Sleepers special, resulting in the rarest of RPGs, one that actually leaves you wishing your time in this world was so, so much longer. And it does leave us with just one question. Where the f*** is the sequel? Come on! Come on, I'm ready! Number 3, Max Payne. Okay, here's a little fun thing for you. Prepare to feel very, very old when I tell you that in just a few years' time, Max Payne, the original game, will be a quarter of a century old. Ooh, my wrinkles, my bones, my heart, my god! It is so ugly. I'm sorry, Max. What's up with that face? You look like a cat's butthole if it could taste itself. But still, it plays like a shining gem and remains arguably the benchmark for bullet time mayhem in video games. Inspired by the films of John Woo and The Matrix, Max Payne's gritty noir storytelling melts with narcotically addictive balletic slow-mo gunplay to deliver one of the purest, most no-nonsense action games. And say it with me, kids, because I did forget on the previous video, of all time! Yes, that's right, it's come over from what culture with me, baby! Soaring through the air and ventilating fleets of bad guys with machine gun fire never gets old, and even over two decades later, it's still an impressively well-oiled machine. With a playtime of only around five hours, Max Payne is a blood-soaked sprint of an action extravaganza that's barely got an ounce of fat on it. That ounce actually being the game's infamously horrible nightmare levels. Thank you, thank you very much. I hate it. Thankfully, those sections account for just a small fraction of what is otherwise a perfect distillation of a video game power fantasy. Plus, the equally brilliant sequel can also be comfortably be beaten in less than 10 hours as well. And with remakes of the first two Max Payne games currently in development, hopefully they won't lose a shred of that shrewd brevity. Number 2, Inside. Developer Playdead followed up their unforgettable debut Limbo with an altogether superior effort, the mesmerizing puzzle platformer Inside. But while many developers opt to hugely scale up their sophomore projects, Playdead decided to keep Inside on the short side, its gorgeous minimalistic trek through a terrifying dystopian world lasting less than three hours. Here players controlled a nameless boy as he attempts to navigate the monochromatic environment while also avoiding its many hidden dangers. But what elevates inside above that relatively familiar indie game framework is its stunningly subdued world building and story. Little is spoon fed to the player here, leaving them to draw their own conclusions about precisely what the chuff is going on. And then of course, there's that ending. Woof. Now I won't spoil it for people who've not yet played it, but there are going to be two giant fat messes at the end of this title. The thing that's going on at the end, and also you crying on the sofa. I love you buddy, you look beautiful. Oh, I've got an incoming call! Fuck off! It was spam, don't worry about it. <laughs> I hope it was anyway. Oh sh**, that was probably spec savers. And number one, Far Cry 4, 5 and 6. Now I think a fair few people probably expected a Far Cry game to be on this list, but you know what friend, I'm all about pumping up those numbers, so why don't we actually take on three Far Cry titles at once, which can all be beaten in under 10 hours. Buckle up, bucko! And while you do this, probably don't think about the fact that you've spent, I don't know, about 200 quid on three games that you're basically choosing to ignore the vast bulk of content for. In Far Cry 4, all you need to do is stay seated, enjoy the spread of food in front of you, and maybe turn the radio up for 15 minutes or so to drown out the sounds of pagan men having a meltdown in order to be taken directly to your family resting place and seeing out the game in relative ease. In Far Cry 5, all you need to do is be the worst police officer ever and not arrest the sweaty grease bag that is Joseph C. 
speed. Now, to be clear, there is a little more effort needed here than in Far Cry 4 because you have to press a single button, but you know what, friend? I believe in you, we can get through this together, come on! And finally, we have Far Cry 6, which actually does tax the player a little more than this, this time forcing them to complete the intro section up until we get the option to flee to Miami. Now, the game does heavily imply that you should well, not do this and see out the rest of the game, but you do have the option to do so, and why not take the opportunity to just go to a beach, put your feet up and relax, my friend, and you can just sit there thinking about the fact that you completed three games in under 10 hours. I mean, that's crazy, right? I mean, most day one patches for AAA games take longer to download than that. That's depressing. And there we go, my friends. Those were 10 brilliant games that you can finish in under 10 hours. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comment section below. And if you'd like to chat to me in the meantime, between these videos on the future game show, you can do so by going over to Twitter and Instagram, where it's at RetroJ, but the O is a zero, or you can swing by Live and Let's Dice. That's what my hat's logo is, where I do lots of board game content, and of course, my aforementioned crippling Warhammer addiction. Fun stuff! But before I go, my friends, we've spoken today about brilliant things and doing things in time, and why not meld them together to talk about you? Yes, you, the person watching this video, because I want you to take however much time you can out of your day to sit there and remind yourself that you are a massive ledge. You deserve the best things in life, like love, happiness, and success, and do not let anything or anyone else tell you otherwise. You are a fucking superstar. Now go out there and smash it, because I bloody believe in you. All right? See you next week here on the Future Game Show. I've been Jules, you've been awesome. I'll catch you later. Bye. That was so so geeky. Bye, bye. Double way.